moment of truth. Oh, that does not look very good at all. How's that magnet look awesome? Oh, wow. It has been better. Holy smoke. It has a nice metallic flake to it though, so I think it does add a little bit of friction and character to it. Next step, we're gonna get out the croil here because we got some bolts inside the frame that I don't have the highest hopes for that are commonly to give trouble. So there's four of them, at least they kind of give you a little bit of room to get up in there to get all of them. Now we've got a couple transfer case bolts there. This whole thing is gonna come out of here. Haas is working on these front drive shaft straps so that way we can just take this front drive shaft and take it all out as one piece and worry about that stuff when it's on the ground, not have to worry about it. Now that we have a flex plate on the truck, we're coming on a little fine tuning such as the transmission line. So George is going to tell us what exactly is going on with the new crew that we're running, how we're going to make these AN fittings work with it. So they give you, these are like a hard line fitting. So this is basically like a compression fitting. Once we, we're going to have to cut this rib off so that we can slide this onto there and then we will put this on there and this will basically crush this little collar down in there on this line it's a little bit more reliable than like a hose clamp or something so let's get these cut off and then we'll deburr everything and we'll put those on the cooler here It is day two here at the shop for the transmission removal. Now, last night, the trans got out. We were pretty much all dead tired, so we went home after that. And now we're kind of back for the uh, prepping and reinstallation of the new train. Removal went pretty smooth, as smooth as it could have gone. We do have a new flex plate for this, so that will be coming off. There's a nice little access point. Because this all went so fast, I want to kind of cover how exactly she came out. There's an access point up on the side of the back cover of the engine. Put a flashlight on it, you can see it right up in there where you see those two bolts that held a cover on. That cover comes off and you can get your converter bolts out. So pretty good access if you have a real long extension to shoot up in there. Cooler lines, here's one of the brackets and they just kind of ran down the front of this and connected right here to the cooler. Now when doing a new transmission, especially from one that failed, it is a very good, almost in our opinion, it is not an option to do a new cooler. You have to do a new cooler because that cooler, all those little fins, you got to think of all the clutch material from the converter, from the clutches, everything else that builds up. And that's the smallest point in there. So it's going to get in that filter, or we'll call it a filter, but it's really the cooler, gets stuck up in there. And then you put a fresh new trans in, new fluid. And then all of a sudden you're recirculating all the stuff that was stuck inside of that cooler. So it is a perfect time to go ahead and upgrade because why would you put a factory one in for a I, don't, I wanna say maybe a couple hundred dollars more, you can be into a nice Mishimoto cooler, especially if this thing is gonna be towing. It's something nice to have on the trans and to protect your investment you're putting into the truck. Transmission lines, because of the age of the truck, it's good to go ahead and do a new set because they do get rusty. They do get a little bit corroded around the fittings. We went with a full send diesel kit. It's basically just AN lines here, cut and with the ends that we need. So we're gonna figure out how to make these work and then add the cooler to it. Some housekeeping left to do is going to be getting all this shifting linkage, a sensor and all that kind of stuff onto the new trans as well as the transfer case. It's kind of going to be, a, it's going to hurt me a little bit. We're going to have this nice, beautiful black trans and we're going to have to put this crusty case on it. Now let's talk a little about this beast right here. Now, like I've said, this is a transmission built from RevMax. This is the 47RE 
for the second gen, so that's gonna carry you carry you 98 and a half up until your 2002. Previous to this would be the 47 RH. So the E is just electronic. It's a little more electronic if you wanna call it that for the age of the truck. Now it's kinda of cool how RevMax rates their trains. They, they do it a little different than most. Usually you'll see stages. So most transmission places you'll see stage one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Now what they do with this trans is they pretty much build it internally to the moon. So inside of this, everything is taken care of. The internals from the valve body, GPZ clutches, custom machine pressure plates, all that kind of stuff. Every last detail you can do is done to this at a base level. The only thing you can do is add three shafts to it. You can do an input, output, or intermediate shaft. So the, the question becomes, when do you want to do what shaft? Now the first one to go is going to be the input. The input is something that's going to be done if you plan to do any type of towing with a truck, you put any little bit of power to it, it's kind of a good starter point. The second shaft to worry about is going to be the output. If you're into doing boosted launches, racing the truck, anything like that, that's something that puts a lot of stress on the output. Now the intermediate shaft is gonna be the strongest of the three from the factory, but as soon as you eclipse that 750 horsepower mark, that's when that one likes to shear. So for my instance, and in my case here, this thing's just kind of a, I mean, it's a little hopped up. We got a turbo in it, we got injectors in it, but it's nothing crazy. It started at a pretty low horsepower, let's be honest, it's a 2001. For my case, I only did a billet input shaft, and the internals on this are rated for 1,500 horsepower. So the internals, good as the day is long, just did a billet input. So let's get to work on swapping parts over. Fast forward almost two months now and uh, a lot of miles later, I finally wanted to get some miles on the second gen. Let's see what she does before I post a video about it. Let's test this trans to the max here. So with this, it's not too heavy of a load here. My trailer empties about 4,500 pounds, got about 800 pounds of water, plus a tractor around 3,000 with the weight. So nothing too, too crazy. We're probably sitting somewhere between seven and 8,000 if I had to guess on the trailer. Now, one thing I do want to see is since we went with a low stall converter, this is the reason why. You can kind of see we're a little bit on an incline here. And the worst part of that old converter, since it was a high stall converter, is when you go up a grade like this, you put your foot into it, it didn't really want to do anything. You had to make the thing scream and really build up a lot of heat for it to actually start moving the trailer. So let's go ahead and find out what exactly this thing likes to do on a hill like this. Now under a normal circumstance, this thing would jump up to probably 1800 RPMs to get moving at all. So let's see what we got. Alright, about 1400 we are cruising along. Okay, so much, much, much better. I'm sure the other converter was also shot. Probably didn't help, but I mean, 1000 RPMs, I can pretty much keep this thing cruising along. So, man, that is awesome. I have been, I've been wanting to have that for so long, not having to floor this thing to get somewhere.